Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to Facebook Live. Um, I am going to give you guys a few moments to um, sign on so I can see some people. And if my my crew will give me a thumbs up when there's enough people to get going um, because I cannot see. Today we're going to be going over the uh, felting with the faf embroidery. Um, so we're gonna be playing with felting. We're gonna be um, talking about kind of all things felting. Uh, so I wanna remind everybody that, uh, first of all, that this is a free event from FAF and uh, we never ask for personal information or more importantly, credit cards on Facebook. So if you see any links that um, are asking for any kind of personal information, uh, please ignore them. We are trying to delete them as soon as they come up, but if you would just ignore them. Um, all right, so I am going to go ahead and uh, get started. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever worked with felting before, um, but it is, it's really fun, it's really easy. Um, and one of my favorite things is it's one of those projects that you can put in the machine and then, you know, go to bed and let it, let it do it for you. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, but your felting kit is going to come with a few items here and it will come with a needle guard and it's going to come with a plate cover. It's going to come with a bobbin replacement, and it's going to come with felting needles. You can get replacement felting needles um, very easily from your dealer, uh, but yeah, you can use these with pretty much any of the FAF embroidery machines. So the only exception is that the Creative Icon does have a bigger bobbin, so you may wanna double check um, if it's going to use a bigger bobbin or not. I don't think so, but just double check. So you're going to have no bobbin in the bobbin case and your little fake bobbin is what I call it. it we're going to drop that in here. You're going to put one of your felting needles into where the needle is. And let me give you a peek what the felting needles look like. Because they are a little different than your regular needle. A felting needle, do you see that? Look, I see how it's all barbed and it is very short and it is barbed. And that is what creates the felting. Put that in here. And you're not going to be using your needle threader. And if you do accidentally hit your needle threader, it, it misses it because it is a short needle. So you don't have to worry about damaging it at all. This is your plate cover. So it's going to, these little holes, uh, connectors are going to pop right into these little holes right here. And it's going to cover your feed dogs. And this is a nice thing. I really, really recommend not forgetting this because felting is uh, very fuzzy. So it can get quite messy. This helps protect the, the fuzz from getting down in uh, your bobbin area so it is very nice so you're going to take off the ankle completely and you're going to replace it with the felting guard so i'm working on the fast creative icon um for the for the the Facebook Live, uh, but like I said, almost all of the FAF embroidery machines will do felting. Um, you can get felting all over the place, but my Sonet library has a ton of felting designs. There are felting designs that are built in, um, and I'm going to show you how you can get to them. So first of all, if you have a FAF creative icon, we have a help center built in. 
Um, but if you don't, we can we still have a solution for you. So on your phone or your tablet, you can, there is an app and there's three apps, two of which are tied to the creative icon, but there is one called creator Q and it is for all, all of you. So you can go ahead and download that and then you get this help center uh, right on your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck, uh, switch over to the creative icon screen, but you'll see that it is very similar to this. So I'm going to swap on over here. So if I go in from the main screen here, um, I can actually go. So this is the home screen and I can either go start sewing, start embroidery, or I can just go straight to the help center. So I'm going to go right to the help center. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. And you can see how this is very similar to what I just showed you. So what I want to do is the nice shortcut is I'm going to switch my camera here again. So one of the things about going through the shortcut, you don't have to go through the shortcut to go to access any of your embroidery or sewing techniques. What makes going through the help center so handy is that it will bring all of everything you asked for. So I'll show you what I mean, because when I go and tell it I want to do felting, it's going to bring all the felting designs right to me instead of me going hunting for them. So I'm going to go ahead into techniques and tutorials because we're doing some techniques and we have sewing techniques and there's a whole bunch of uh, garment techniques. There's sewing techniques, um, the exclusive stitches and others, quilting techniques and embroidery techniques. Now I'm going to come on down here. You can see all of the different techniques that are available, um, but I'm going to go ahead and touch into the felting technique. Now the nice thing here is now we have the instructions for the felting. So if you've never tried felting before, um, this is a good place to try some of these techniques that you may have not tried before because it will give you step by step um, how it works. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you is the freestanding felting. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to tap on that. I was working on something this morning. And you can see here, there are the instructions. So this is exactly what you will see in the app as well. Um, one of the differences in the app, however, is with a uh, MySoNet Wi-Fi capable machine, uh, your apps are interactive. So if I were to go to uh, my felting, so I'm going to show you right here that the instructions are the same. They are the same. But it will give you the instructions step by step, what you need, how to prepare, etc. Now the content here. Here are our built-in embroidery designs, and here they are here. So you can kind of see whether you have them or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and touch my little felting design. I'm going to minimize. I'm going to go ahead and center this into the hoop. So here in the control area here, I'm just going to touch the center of my control wheel and that'll drop it into the center of the hoop. Do we have any questions so far? Do we have people here? Okay. So just don't want to lose y'all. So I'm choosing this little design. I am going to tell it that I am going to be using the grand metal hoop. Um, because I just love that hoop for uh, felting. This is, it's a little large for this particular project because this design is quite small. But I am going to talk about the um, metal hoop here in a moment. But we're going to go ahead and go to embroidery stitch out. 
And here I'm going to be telling it that I want to um, just work with the dynamic. I don't, it, we're not using the, the spring loaded uh, 60 like we do for normal. This is just going to hover. So I'm just going to put dynamic, meaning it's just going to sit still. Okay. So here we have this little icon here, and that is showing us the felting needle. This is a design that has both felting and regular embroidery on it. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for a moment. And we're going to talk about that real quick. But before we go on to the felting, um, I want one to talk about the hoop and why I like it so much. And two, um, the kind of stuff that you can use for felting. But this is the the the, the Grand metal hoop. I absolutely love this. It's so, so convenient. And just a tip for those of you that have this it does come with four magnets, and you can get four extra magnets for it, but you don't want to use any more than eight magnets on your uh, metal hoops. The reason is, and it's for the same reason we don't yet have a larger hoop than the 240 by 150, and that is weight. So once you start adding more weights than the eight that they allow, you're putting, you're just putting stress on your embroidery arm. And so you really don't want to do that because it'll just burn it out faster. So no more than eight. But my two favorite most used metal hoops are the 240 by 150 and the 100 by 100. So each hoop comes with four magnets. So if you were to get the 240 by one or 250 by 140 and the 100 by 100, you'll have your eight magnets and it'll save you from having to buy extra magnets. So I highly recommend getting both. So another thing that you're going to be using with felting a lot is um, Aquamagic water soluble stabilizer. Um, they come in variety sizes of rolls. Uh, so you just get whatever one you like. I tend to get the larger rolls because I they're more versatile. So you're just going to cut off what you need. So I'm working in my lap a little bit. So I have everything piled on top of myself here. So you're going to hear little cr crunches and clangs every once in a while. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting two pieces off. So I have two, two pieces of the water soluble stabilizer because the first piece Oh, the magnets are fun <laughs> when you're trying to juggle. So let me come here. So the first piece I am going to go ahead and lay down because this will be our base. And I'm just going to kind of tuck a magnet and kind of upside down. And it'll hold my spot. So now we're going to use roving. So wool roving, you can get wool roving all over the place. Um, uh, some dealers even have it. So uh, check with your local dealer and see if they have uh, any wool roving. Uh, but wool roving works really well for the freestanding lace. And wool roving looks like this. This is a pretty small um pocket of it but this is what it looks like so it's basically the wool that hasn't been turned into anything else so it's very loose and easy to tear apart so what you they they recommend in the instructions is to to separate it and we're going to lay some out And we're laying everything kind of one way here. And then we'll just grab some more and we'll do it crossways. 
So I'm just kind of separating this a bit and I'm going to cross wave it here. Wool roving is one of the things that you can use. I am going to show um, some other things that you can use for felting as well. Uh, but wool roving is great for freestanding. So I'm going to go ahead and now cover this. And I'm going to take my magnets and tuck this down. And this is where it really becomes fun too, because I don't, I can really pull this nice and tight so that it's, it kind of pushes this down a little bit. When I use a regular hoop with uh, felting, which you can do, but in that case, what you'd want to do is you'd want to kind of pin the corners of the felting to, to tuck it down. But again, for those of you that have the metal hoops, you can testify, testify um, how great they are. And if you don't have it, I cannot stress enough how much, how easy they are to work with. So now I've got this hoop then ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in to into my braid rail. Okay. So I'm going to switch to my screen again because when we looked at the colors, there were three different steps. So if we come back to the project here, it can, it's going to show you step by step how to do it. But like it showed here, uh, we did the, the roving crossways like I showed you. It's going to have a stitch out a little bit, uh, and then you're going to uh, tear off the stabilizer if you want to, to add more wool roving, and then continue. So we're going to go ahead and come back over here. I'm going to give it some gas and let it stitch out. This stitches fairly quickly because it is such a small design. This is a good place if you have questions. So as I was saying earlier, um, well, let me wait till you can see my face again. I'm going to let this stitch out. But as I was saying earlier, um, this is a great uh, project if you want to embroider while you're awake, um, while you're away from your sewing machine. My local dealer, 20, I think the, the twins are now 23 years old. But back when her twins were babies, she said that the only time that she could embroider anymore was when she was asleep. I am the shortcut queen. I'm always looking for tricks, so I had to know what she was doing. So basically what she would do is, and what I do often, is I'll make sure my machine is clean, full bobbin, brand new needle, get it sewing, um, and then turn my speed way down and then go to bed. Because the machine, if there's a problem, that the machine will uh, shut down for you. And I know some of you are very nervous about walking away from your machine, and some of you not so much. I can count in the last 20 years on my hand how many times a problem happened that uh, I couldn't fix, like the fabric got tipped over or anything like that. Uh, but most of the time, if the, the thread broke or the bobbin ran out, it would just stop and wait for me until morning. But this, this, these particular projects do not have, there's no thread, there's no bobbin. So you can just let it go um, and go to bed. The key is to turn the machine speed way down. So that is one thing. I tend to embroider at full speed, um, even when I shouldn't, uh, except when I sleep, it goes on super, super slow. Um, can you felt on the creative 1.5? I do believe so. Um, 
So like I said, most of the embroidery machines uh, you can felt with. So just check with your dealer to make sure that they have um, the, the parts that you need. So here we have um, a one stop. So over here, when I come to here, oh, when I come to here, there's there's the needle, uh, felting needle three times. Uh, but one of the things is these are stops if we if we want them. At this point, I could come over here and say, oh, you know what? I didn't put enough roving in. So I could actually just come and peel this off, add some more roving, add a different color roving, and yes, this will peel all the way off. So I can add more, and then I can just put my stabilizer back down. So that is one of the reasons that I believe that it stops. And then we'll just hit start again. And so it will continue. And this time it's going to uh, stitch a little heavier. Now, when I go and sew at night, um, like if I were to do this while I was asleep, I make sure that there's plenty of roving, that I don't have to do any stops and checks. Um, and then I just turn off um, or color sort. You can color sort and color merge and it'll bring them all three together. Uh, but I will often just go ahead and uh, do a monochrome and just do the whole thing. Because even when it does the embroidery at the end, I don't mind if it stitches out the embroidery without anything. Because I can always come back in the morning and just finish up a little bit of embroidery that needs to be done. So we're letting that go. Oh, you guys are not seeing that. So I'm just playing with my app here. Another thing too is your um, your embroidery machines. Many of the, especially the the Creative Icon and some of the newer ones, they will also tell you kind of an idea of what time is left on it. And if you see, if I slow this down, you will. This is pretty close, but you can see it went from two minutes to six minutes. So when I do embroidery at night, sometimes a something that would stitch out in 20 minutes will take it will take all night when I turn it down. So um, I just let it go. If you are one of those that um, it makes you very nervous to walk away from your embroidery machine at all, I do not recommend to try that. Um, so you just do what's comfortable for you. But one of the things while this is embroidering, um, I'll show you some of the things that you can do with the freestanding lace. So here's a different little flower that I did. Um, and I turned it into a little coaster. So it's just a, the freestanding flower like we're looking at. And I just bumped a whole bunch of them together and just did little uh, a little zigzag set at zero into all of the edges. But you get a nice little coaster. Another thing too is there's a design on my Sonet library that is this little circle. And it's a great one. You can throw a whole bunch into um, a hoop and, and stitch a whole bunch at once, which is what I did here to create another coaster. I did exactly the same thing. And if you just keep on going, you can make like table runners um, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Or you can back it with fabric and uh, do felt instead of like yo-yos and make your your quilts and your yo-yo quilts with felt instead. And there's a whole bunch of fun shapes like that um, 
that you can do. This is one that I just recently did. Um, and as the face masks. So I did the little freestanding uh, felt flowers on the side. So if you have a special uh, event happening or a wedding or anything like that, um, this would be really fun. So let me give you a close up on this. So basically this is just a, a face mask with tulle over it, just to kind of make it a little more festive. And I made just a whole bunch of these and just again, tacked them down with a zigzag and created um, a, a fun face mask. Um, because uh, face it, face masks are gonna be around for a little while yet, I think. All right, so any questions so far? All right, so now we have one more little bit of felting. But for, for no, I'm going to go ahead and stitch that up. So, um, yeah, these are my freestanding samples, unfortunately. So we're just going to let this go. Um, any more questions about this? about the freestanding at all. Okay. Any questions about the metal hoops? Any questions about stabilizer? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and for the sake of speeding this along, um, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the, the embroidery bit, but I'm not going to stitch that out. But what I am going to do is show you what you would do uh, next. So I talked earlier about how you could take this off and add more roving if you needed to, if you wanted to give it a look. So you just kind of come and pull this away and add more roving if you want to. Um, when you're done and ready for the final embroidery color, so like in these guys, um, oh, and this is a good example too. So on the, these ones here, I knew I wanted to make a coaster. So I, I did stop and add more roving. I added a lot of roving because I wanted these to be really thick. So it would make a nice uh, buffer. However, when I did the ones on the face mask, I wanted them to be much more lightweight. So I was very light on my roving. And if you were to hold these up, when I held these up, you can almost see through them. It's very light. So see how you can see right in there? It's, it's kind of very faint because I wanted it to be lighter. So you can do stuff like that too. It's entirely up to you. But at this point, before we add the machine embroidery, you can come and trim away all your excess roving. And I do recommend a good pair of applique scissors. And I'm doing this at a bad angle, so don't judge me when I don't get it super close. Because normally I do this at my table. But a good pair of applique scissors. The duckbills are my, my personal favorites because it really, you, no matter how close you get to it, you really can't cut into your fabric, especially when you are in the right positions. So with duck bills, it doesn't matter how close I get there, it's not going to cut too far. So it's, it's really, really nice. So all this excess wool roving too, you want to make, um, I have little baggies, and I save all my, my scrap roving because I can recycle it and reuse it and do all that stuff. Okay. So, oh, I'm just gonna trim this off and tuck this away. All right, so here I, I took it off out of here, but if I were doing this where I still had um, uh, regular embroidery to do, I would not take it out of the hoop. I would just peel off that top layer, trim everything around, and then I can just drop it back in. I don't need to re-add the top layer. I can just drop it back in, 
you're going to change everything back to uh, your regular embroidery. So your 60 embroidery foot and just put your regular bobbin in everything else and it stitches out like regular embroidery. All right. So what is the name of the app again? So the app is called the Creator Q. You can go to MySonet. You can go to faf.com or you can go to your app store. So if you're on an iPhone, you can go to your app store. If you are not on an iPhone, you'll go to Google Play. Those are your choices. And that would be the same for your tablet. So, and like I said, what you'll get is the same thing that you would get on the built-in menu on the creative icon. So it's very helpful. And this little guy here, <gasps> stabilizer guide. So what's my personal favorite stabilizer? That's a tricky question. Um, it, it is one of those things that uh, you need a good cutaway, you need a good tear away, and you need a good wash away. Um, and those kind of cover all of your bases, especially when you're starting. Um, I do like the, um, getting older is fun. It'll come back to me. Um, but there is a wash away and there's a heat away that lay on top of, uh, like if you're going to do terry cloths and stuff like that. So I use the, the heat away of that. Um, and again, went out of my head. So the wash away, the tear away and the cut away. Um, Aqua Magic is my favorite wash away um, because it behaves like fabric and I can manipulate it like fabric, but it washes out so easily. So once we're done with this, so like with these little guys, when I was all done with these, all I did, uh, clear and melt, thank you. Clear and melt is the topper um, wash uh, melt away. So, and then the fun thing with clear and melt is if you follow the instructions, and set your iron to the temperature that it recommends. When you iron it, it almost just dissolves. I tend to run my iron high, so I have to kind of, you know, it dissolves and then I have to brush off the little residue. But if you follow the instruction, it works really, really, really well. But on this, so once I want to get rid of the stabilizer, is I just take these and I put them in a bowl of lukewarm water and let it set for like an hour. And then I just pull them out and lay them on a towel and let them dry out. Um, one of the things that I used to do was I was always putting them in, in hot water and that would always leave kind of a sticky. So um, I really recommend when all else fails, read the instructions. I am a very poor instruction reader myself, but lukewarm water works the best. And whatever you do, don't take the anything with water soluble stabilizer out of your hoop and throw it right into the washing machine. You will really regret it. Trust me. All right. So, um, any questions about the freestanding lace? This our freestanding felting. This is the freestanding, and there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with that. All right. Moving on. What time is it? Oh, time gets away from me so fast. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to come over to the screen here and I'm going to go to my embroidery edit and I'm going to delete this. Actually, I can just go to my help menu and I'm going to do the felting with multiple layers. So again, it's asking me if I want to clear my work. Yes, I do. So once again, I get instructions for this as well as the content. This is a very uh, simple little design, so it's very quick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and once again center it. Make sure I'm in the right hoop. Yep, embroidery stitch out. Now this is one that I have a whole lot of fun with. And okay, so once again, I just changed it to the, the dynamic foot. Now this is a, a multi-layer. So you just get your fabric, a plain piece of fabric, and your hoop with no stabilizer. 
So I'm just going to lay this down and hoop this up. I'm just going to put a couple of magnets on just to hold the spot because we will be adding stabili uh, water soluble stabilizer on top. Now I'm going to show you some, some samples of this because this is really, really fun. So this is probably my fav favorite form of felting. This is just a little thrift store find. It's just a little bag. Um, so I opened the lining and uh, just felted it out from the wrong side. And I just threw a bunch of uh, roving out. I particularly like this design. You're going to see it in quite a few of my samples um, because it. no matter what I do, if I do anything that's for garments or um, wearables, I always tend to gravitate towards this design. <laughs> so I didn't realize I had it in so many places. Now, this particular design, um, I did multiple times on purpose, just so you could show, show you how the same design can stitch out um, just using different mediums. So this one, I actually used um, just a felt, a felt um, piece that you can purchase. Now, I do recommend to be careful not to get the, the cheap felt. So your some of your dealers will carry this, and if they don't, you can ask them because some of them may not have it but can get it. Um, but this is a a the felt that they carry for embroidery is really really nice quality. Um, the chain stores they do sometimes have some good felt, but more likely than not they have the inexpensive. And I'm going to show you what that can do and and why I don't like it. But if you take a look at this felt, this felt, it was just a single layer of this, um, and it just it fills so beautifully. And then on the back, even if when you trim it away, the back is also pretty as well. So this is what good quality looks like. This is what not so good quality looks like. And you can see here where it's not quite filled in. But this is the, the stuff you get at the, the, the chain stores. Um, so really, really, and if this is a look that you want, by all means, go for it. But um, if you're looking for something really high quality, I do recommend to get the nice, the nice felt. And it doesn't necessarily have to be wool. This is a polyester. Um, it, it can be other, other fibers. Isn't that pretty? Did everybody say yeah? I'm going to go and put this here. So this is another, again, the same bird, but this is a completely different technique. In this case, I used yarn. So here, this is what you see on, on this part of the bird. And then I did use this, excuse my hair here, this uh, fuzzy decorative yarn. For the tail. So it doesn't necessarily have to be felt. So it looks funny on the back, so you don't want to leave it unlined, but it does create some really interesting looks on the design itself. Any questions so far? All right. So we're moving on. This one is probably my favorite. So this is a combination of wool roving and Angelina threads. If you have never seen Angelina threads before, check with your local dealers. Um, they may have some, and they often know where to get some. Um, but Angelina fibers, they're super cool. And they look like this. So they look, they just look like little, little um, tinsel. But you can, uh, when you press it, it, you, it turns into like a solid piece of fabric. But what I did here was I just laid my roving down and then I just sprinkled a little bit of Angelina on top just so that it would sparkle through. So, but isn't that cool? Now, I do apologize for all the lint. I cannot tell you how many times today I have linted this black. I am never using black for a Facebook Live again. <laughs> it's like I just can't keep it clean. So any questions about the... Yeah, all right. 
This was another fun one where I was just kind of experimenting. And in this case, I just got a, a bundle of that Siri fabric, a uh, sari fabric. So that, that Indian dress, um, you will sometimes see sari strips that are sold in a big bundle. And so I just took some of those and pressed them out flat. And I laid those here. So I had no idea what was going to happen. But here you can see I laid a couple this way and I laid some strips this way and just to see what would happen. And that's where this came out. So again, it does not have to be wool. It can be all kinds of fabrics and fun stuff. Another thing is if you hit the thrift stores, thrift stores also, also can come up with the wealth of fabric. So you can get pieces of wool um, for very cheap and chop them, chop them up. And the bulk of when I buy used uh, clothing, the bulk of my fabric is used for something else. And then I just hang on to scraps all the time. So I'm kind of a scrap hoarder. And that is how I did this. So this actually I just did today. I'm very excited about how this came out. So this is, I took a bunch of those scraps and I put it on my cutting table and I took my rotary cutter and just chopped it up. And then I just sprinkled it on to the back of this. And this is how I got this. So really, really fun. But I'm going to go ahead and show you quickly and I'll just go ahead and... Oh, this is one more I forgot to show you. Um, this, this is one that can be done as a standalone where it a uh, single layer. However, this has um, imitation dupioni. So it's like a polyester dupioni. But wings are very popular right now. And I really intended last week to go out and find a denim jacket at the thrift store that I could add these to the back to. I just never got a chance to go out. So here's my wings. The wings are very popular. If you have teenagers or young adults, um, very, very popular. Or even if you're just, you know, one of those cool kids, um, they're very popular. So I'm going to use another piece of this felt here. And what I have is, so like I said, I have a single layer of fabric. And this would be the right side down. So this is the wrong side up. And then I would just lay my, my felting piece down. You guys want to see this? So I lay my felting piece down. And once I get this into position, then I will um, magnets. What do they do with my magnets? There they are. Then I will come and just tuck this and smooth all this out. Just tuck up my magnets. And I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Is as I do this, I just kind of pull this all smooth. So hooping at the the sewing machine is not ideal, except when you're using a metal hoop, because you can smooth it out as you go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach this and it's ready to go. Now, one of the things that I love about this is that it's always a surprise on the other side. So I will sometimes say I, oh, no, it's, I told it the wrong hoop. So, so I told it the wrong hoop. So I'm just coming back to tell it that I'm using the grand metal hoop. And then I go back to embroidery stitches. Right now I can come back here. So we'll go ahead and get it going. This should not take long at all. So where are those designs from? Uh, the bird 
and the bird here. This one, whoops. <laughs> the bird and this one I can I pulled from my sonnet library. The ones that I'm st actually stitching out are the ones that are built into the machine. You're, you're looking at me looking at it. You guys want to see it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to send Meredith a quick message here. I have something, Meredith checking on something. I think it's there, but I have to make sure before I get you guys all excited. So this stitched out, as you could see, very, very quickly. And it's a very small design. And now I would just come and trim that away. But one of my favorite things, one of my all-time favorite things when doing this kind of felting is looking at it at the right side for the first time. So where you go, ooh, isn't that pretty? So let me get you close up and personal. You didn't you see that? So, but I always get so excited about how it looks when we're on the other side. Okay, and then last but not least is the easiest form. It is great on, uh, denim and it's the you see it on denim the most however there is a lot of fabrics that you can do with it as well um, you just got to kind of keep your eye open for designs so as this let me take you bring you back over to the screen so i'm going to go back to embroidery edit because we're going to change our design again and I'm going to come over to the help center. And this time I'm going to say we're just doing a single layer. So again, asking me, do I want to clear my work? Yes. Here's the instructions. And then there's the content. So I'm just going to choose, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose this because it'll stitch out a little larger. But. How big is it? First, let me find out how big is it. Maybe too big. Yes. So I'm going to delete that. Now, when we go to the help center and I've selected the content and you no longer see that window, it actually parks right down here. So anytime you want to come back to what you've selected, it parks right there in the project. So I'm actually going to choose the small design here. Just for time wise. Yes, I want to clear it. And so you see how he just goes back down there. So I'm going to come and center him again. So I've changed it to center. I'm going to make sure that I have, uh, see it's selecting the quilter soup. I want the grand metal hoop. And then I'm going to go to embroidery stitch out. <laughs> The reason that it changes the hoop is because it's always trying to get the smallest hoop for the project. So that's why it keeps changing when I select something. All right, so let me bring you back here. So this is probably the easiest because I can hoop an empty hoop. Now, if you were going to use your regular hoop, you want to make sure that you've hooped your fabric. Because I'm using the metal hoop, which have I said that it's one of my favorites? I can just lay my fabric down and then tack everything down 
just right from here. And I'm just going to smooth this out over here. And I do like my magnet. So I know about you folks who like to use more magnets than it's recommended because like you, I like a lot of magnets. So I use my eight magnets whether I need them or not. It's really what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and touch uh, start. And he's going to stitch out. And I'm going to show you a couple of samples um, of this. How long he's going to take. So he's cranking right along. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Without looking at my machine, which is a Creative 4.5. Will I have some of those? Uh, to be honest with you, I cannot remember the menu of the 4.5 off the top of my head. Um, I just, I can't remember. I can find out for you and answer you in just a few minutes. Um, but I can't remember right off the top of my head. Do you set your machine to go fast all the way up when you're embroidering? Now that is one of those that is one of those precarious questions because top speed with embroidery is not always recommended. It's the way I tend to do it, but it's not always recommended. So if you are a, a speed freak like I am and you're embroidering along and your thread breaks, that's fine. If it breaks again relatively soon, that's really quick indication that I'm sewing too fast. So then I will turn my speed down almost immediately. If I have any issues whatsoever with my embroidery, and even when I go and, because I'm one of those, I will embroider when it's in the other room, right? But I'm one of those, I do watch it for about a minute before I actually walk away. So if I have any problems within that first minute, um, you can tell that you probably need to turn your speed down. And then there are some designs that you just know right away as soon as it starts, it you just wanna turn it down. You're working with heavy or thick or anything like that, just turn it down. And you know, if you're ever in doubt, just start in a medium speed and stay in a relatively medium speed and play there. Um, because the, the, the ultimate result is we want good results. So, um, don't be afraid to play, but don't be afraid to turn it down. So, so this is this is a single layer. So what this did here was it just pushed this out to the right side of the fabric. Now this is a relatively small design, but I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Um, but let's see, I've got another question. Oh no, I answered that one. Already. How do you slow? Okay, that's a very good question. How do you slow the speed down on the creative icon? That is a very good question. So, right over here onto the side, let me change my angle a bit. You're going to see my little messy room. There is a little switch here, a little slider. So, right now it's at full blast, but if I were to slide it down, you see, there goes my speed. And this is a really nice feature. Um, I will be totally honest with you. When I first saw that it was going to be on the side, I was I liked my little buttons. But I, what I love about this guy is I can actually slide it while it's in motion. So if I, you know, like I said, I, I tend to go faster than I should. But if I have problems, I can just go ahead and turn it down while it's sewing. And I can usually see the result the resolution of the problem and know what speed I'm in. So if you just kind of keep an eye out for it, but I love having the little slider there, um, but that is where it is on the creative icon. Okay. All right. So here we showed this little guy here. 
So this is the wrong side that we, we stitched it on. This is the right side. Now, if, like I said, denim, it's awesome uh, because denim just lends itself to the single layer embroidery. However, if you keep your eyes out, you can get some double-sided fabrics. There's double-sided fabrics out there. Um, anything from flannel to wools to all kinds of fun stuff. And I have this gorgeous wool and um, I just can't bring myself to cut it. And somebody goes, I'll oh, just make a pocket out of it. I'm like, okay, I could do that. Could not bring myself to, to cut it. But I did find a little piece of wool that I had. So I'm going to turn this like into a scarf or something. But one of the things that I love about this, let me show you this up, up close and personal. So this is just a, uh, it's like a coat weight wool, but see how it's double-sided? So it's got one color on one side and another color on the other. And what is so fun about that is when you stitch it, not only do you get a cool looking design on the wrong side, but when you flip it over, now I've got the two going on, but when you flip it over, you get these gorgeous results here as well. And look at that. I'll hold it up uh, so you can get a better view. But here I did, so here I did the brown side up so that the brown came through to the right side. And here I did the cream side up so that the cream would come through on the dark side. So I'm really, really excited about that. And now I have to turn it into something. But here you can see, see how pretty that is? Um, it, it's just so pretty. And then here's the other one. Just so pretty. Oh, give me, go away. Okay. All right, so any questions about any of anything that we've talked about so far? So there's wool roving, there's wool or um, felting sheets, but you want to get the good qualities. Um, there is the double sided fabric. You want to get your felting kit. Felting kit has everything that you need um, to get started. And um, the felting kit has everything you need to get started. All right, so I'm getting a message. Um, so I'm once this is over, because we're really at the end of it, um, I'm going to uh, do some quick checking, and I will answer your questions in the Facebook uh, feed. So keep a lookout for that, because I will come back and answer those questions uh, once I had time to kickstart my brain. Um, but if there's no other questions, I do want to thank you guys for coming. Um, I really appreciate it. But check with your dealers because your dealers can get uh, can either get to get you or point you in the right direction for good supplies um, for felting. But it is really, really a fun, fun project. But I do want to thank you guys for coming. And if there's no other questions. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this uh, session for today. And like I said, if you ask me a question that I haven't answered here, um, keep your eyes peeled because I'm going to answer them in just a moment. Okay, so I will see you guys next time. Um, and I hope to talk to you all soon. Bye.